Now today we're going to hear from six young adults from across Australia and New Zealand. They've all graduated from First Voice Early Intervention Centres for Children with Hearing Loss. Our participants today are a living example of what can be achieved with the right support, but we have to do more. There are four million Australians who are living with hearing loss every day. This is one in six. And unsupported, hearing loss can be devastating at any stage of life. Good morning everyone. My name is Emily Quinn Smythe. I am profoundly deaf. My name is Christopher Turner. With the assistance of my hearing technology, I've been able to unlock my full potential. My name is Kayla Manassa. Due to the fact that I was born profoundly deaf, I've had some obstacles to face. I'm William Prinius. I'm 17 years old and I was born profoundly deaf. I had my first cochlear implant at age 18 months and my second one when I was seven years old. Seeing six young adults standing up as a parent, I would love my child to be able to do what they did today. I have a dream. For me, that dream is that every deaf child born in this country has that same chance at success. No longer do I have to be bound by my hearing loss. No longer do I have to be restricted to certain things. People often come up to me and ask, what's that on your ears? So I tell them I'm deaf, to which they then say, you can't be deaf, you can hear me right now. Well, yes, I am deaf, I'm just not your definition of deafness. Hearing Alison uh, speak today in Parliament in Australia is just an amazing opportunity. I was uh, very honoured to be able to be there and hear her speak. Um, never thought that she would have that opportunity and being able to be there has been amazing. For politicians to actually speak to young adults who were born profoundly deaf and not actually know they were deaf. There was two or three of the children there the politicians did not know they were deaf until they found out after they spoken to them. We do need to increase funding support, we do need to make uh, hearing a health priority and we need to be making sure that the NDIS is actually addressing our uh, hearing. I hope that inspired them to see that just because you're deaf doesn't mean you're not part of the hearing community and that we are just as important and need to get as much recognition as all other types of disabilities. All of the statistics will actually show that people with a disability make better employees than those without because they actually value their job. There's a, uh, an overwhelming case for, uh, for hearing health to be treated as a national health priority um, and part of that has got to be communicating um, with the community, um, both in ensuring that people better understand um, hearing health and deafness, uh, but also in relation to preventative measures as well. Make mine and other deaf people's voices be heard. Remember that not all voices use words. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.